can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Welcome, everybody. This is Anas Ahmed, and I have Mir Ali with me here. So we'll be going over uh, how we design straddle bends by using Midas Civil. So this is the quick presentation outline that I would go over today. Starting with the introduction to Stantec, I would give you a brief description about Stantec and who we are and what we do and our capabilities. Then I will move on to the use of Midas Civil in designing critical bridge elements on various projects in past that we have worked on using Midas. Then we'll move on to a detailed discussion about steel and post-tension straddle bends uh, and other modeling and design features that Mo Midas has in helping design them. Finally, we will conclude the presentation with some questions. So introduction to Stantec. Uh, Stantec is an international uh, professional services firm in engineering and design and consulting with its headquarters based in Edmonton, Canada. It, it, its, uh, its presence around the globe and, and in recent past has successfully won and completed many alternate delivery projects in Texas. It has over 20,000 employees with a total revenue of around $3 billion. Stantec specializes in various sectors, as you can see here. And we are a part of Bridge Group under infrastructure uh, sector based in Dallas. Stantec has a strong presence in North America and ha has worked on various multi-billion dollar pro projects as lead design engineer around the globe. So the use of Midas on various projects. So before I start talking about the use of Midas on various projects, I would like to talk about why we choose Midas as one of our main design software for these projects. So it's very important being a consultant and working on TextDot project that all our softwares be under the approved list by TextDot. Uh, so Midas is approved uh, TextDot software. So this, is, this was one of the reasons in choosing that. And uh, secondly, the Midas has very good user interface as compared to other softwares, uh, especially all the input and output can be imported and exported uh, to and from spreadsheets. Having input and output data in spreadsheets is handy as you can leverage Excel tools and macros capabilities to make it even more efficient. So mainly Midas was uh, used on fast uh, fast-paced alternate delivery projects where we typically work with contractors and subcontractors during design phase and help them in optimizing the design based on their capabilities and availability of material to make the construction as efficient as possible. The so construction staging feature in Midas was a very helpful tool in designing these critical elements. Also, the Technical provisions of these projects uh, needed the design to be checked by an independent design software different from the software used to design. And the results of these two softwares should be within uh, plus minus 5%. So we were able to achieve this envelope and we're satisfied by how results from Midas compared to other design softwares. So at Stantec, we have CSI products as our commercial software. So we needed a new software and we choose Midas as our design software because of the above mentioned reasons. So let's uh, move on. Uh, so use of Midas on various projects. So Midas Civil was used on various projects with bridges, which had steel uh, plate curved girders, tub, steel tub girders, po post-tension eccentric bends, post-tension straddle bends, and steel straddle bends. From our experience with Midas, we have found it to be very uh, efficient, especially in modeling and handling construction stages. Uh, typically, alternate in alternate delivery projects, things change, and there is a need to reanalyze the structure with different conditions as assumed in design based on uh, contractors' RFIs and things like that. So MIDAS construction stage analysis helps us a lot for such changes later during the design. Also, uh, like I said, this is an approved TextDot software, so calculations by Midas are accepted by uh, TextDot for their record. 
So uh, just quickly going over uh, where we have used Midas uh, uh, for plate girder. So these are a few pictures. So on one of our projects, we analyzed and designed steel tapered box tub girder using Midas. Uh, this was a pedestrian bridge with a single tub girder. Uh, typically, MDX would be our preferred go-to program for steel superstructure design, but in this case, MDX was not able to model a single uh, plate girder, and Midas was uh, the solution for it. So the modeling was pretty yeah, quick and easy. So here are another uh, view of the plate girder modeled in uh, uh, box girder modeled in uh, Midas. Uh, as you can see, the stresses. We were able to change the section depth of the tub girder using the tapered section feature in Midas and uh, model exactly as we intended. As you can see from the picture on left, the the depth of the box tub girder is varying along the length of the bridge. So, and, and we have used Midas on the other projects used uh, to design a uh, plate girder. So these are a few construction photos of uh, multi-span uh, plate girder bridge being constructed. Midas was used. This bridge is now constructed and is open to traffic. 3D grill edge analysis option in Midas was utilized to design uh, plate girders, and this was back checked using Midas, uh, and the results were uh, satisfactory. Uh, here are a few more construction pictures of the same multi span plate girder. Uh, here, this is uh, post tension eccentric bends. Here are a few pictures from a project with eccentric bend. Midas was used to design the post tension bars. In this eccentric bend, we had post tensioning in both the uh, cap and column. So there were multiple construction phases of uh, horizontal and vertical post tensioning, and it was uh, analyzed and designed using Midas. We can go into much detail uh, issues about designing uh, and challenges uh, uh, for these eccentric bends, but I would like to move on to straddle bends. So steel straddle bends, uh, we have used Midas uh, Civil to design a box steel straddle bend on one of our design build projects. Uh, here are a couple of pictures during the construction. We had multiple construction phases due to railroad going underneath the bridge. So contractor wanted us to design these straddle bends as both post tension and steel, after which the contractors did a constructability analysis. They ended up using steel as the post tensioning required a lot of coordination with the railroad authorities, which would have delayed the project. Furthermore, the post tension option was not feasible for this situation as post tensioning would, would need uh, foam work to support the gap until First stage post tensioning can be completed after concrete has gained its initial strength. Also, the vertical clearances were very tight to have foam work over the railroad, and the construction window from the railroad was very short. Uh, therefore, the PD option would involve a lot of coordination with uh, railroad, which would delay the construction, and hence the steel option was selected at these railroad crossings. So, for both of the designs, uh, post tension and uh, steel uh, straddle bends, we used uh, Midas Civil to analyze and design them. Uh, these designs were typically back checked by other softwares as an independent check. So this is another uh, plan view of the bends after the deck is constructed. As you can see from the picture on the right hand side, these straddles were uh, ended up being humongous as compared to a crew member standing right next to it. So as mentioned uh, in previous slide, contractor had done a constructability review of the steel versus post tension cap and they concluded that steel cap would cost around three and a half times more expensive than post tension caps. but would significantly reduce the construction uh, management and coordination effort with railroads, which would increase the construction time by around two years. Although concrete is cheap option as compared to steel, the challenges of setting up the foam work on top of railroad was challenging and railroad gave only a uh, four hour construction window. Therefore, steel caps was the best uh, solution. 
So, so these are a few screenshots of various construction phases of Midas model of the steel straddle bench. We ended up with six construction stages. As you can see from these pictures, first, uh, the uh, columns were constructed in stage one, then the steel cap was dropped down onto the columns in stage two. It was critical not to have any field splices in the bend cap and place the entire steel cap on the columns at once due to the railroad coordination. And therefore, we had to keep the weight of the cap minimum uh, within the lifting capacities of the crane. Also, the steel cap was ha uh, hauled from Arizona to Texas. It was a seven hour drive, so we have to keep the hauling limits in mind too. Once the steel cap was placed, uh, the pre-stressed concrete girders were installed on uh, one side of the steel cap and then the girders were installed on the other side, as you can see in construction stage three and four. Uh, after the installation of precast girders, concrete precast panels were placed, uh, cast in place, concrete slab was poured over them in stage five. Finally, the barriers were placed and the structure was analyzed for live load case in the final construction stage. In each of these construction cases, we were able to analyze and check the stresses in straddle bends and optimize the steel plate thicknesses used along the section of the straddle bend. Uh, we were able to reduce the steel cap weight to a maximum of 400 kips. So this is the plan and elevation view of the steel cap uh, drawings. Uh, we had a total of 11 steel straddle bends in this project, all going over the railroad with straddle lengths varying from 110 to 140 feet, with section depth varying from 8.5 to 12.5 feet. Midas was used in sizing the main plate thicknesses and checking the stresses in them per ashto. Other miscellaneous designs, such as the bearing, uh, bearing pad design and the stiffener plates and connection well designs, these were all checked uh, using in-house spreadsheets. So here is a short video of the steel cap being placed uh, by the contractor. They did a really good job installing the cap as there were no issues during construction. They developed this 3D model of the straddle bend from our construction documents. This what model was created to verify and show the alternate sequence from steel cap to pre-stressed girders in the same shift, how the contractors can squeeze the crane and trucks within their access corridor perfectly placed between the three tracks, crane capacities and all clearances at all stages of construction, stability from overturning from girders placed on one side. Uh, also the construction window from the railroad was just four hours during the whole construction of these straddle bend, which was very tight. So moving on, uh, we found Midas civil code check feature, which checks the steel sections per AISC manual to be very handy. This is very useful feature, which checks all the AISC manual requirements and gives a concise output to have it in your calculation book. The most challenging part apart from designing was coordinating with the fabricator and keeping in mind the availability of the material and limits of their construction was a critical part in design process. Needless to say, there were a lot of iterations before we finally pinned down the geometry of the straddle bends. Once the box girder is modeled, we can easily get the stresses on various parts of the section and optimize the plate thicknesses and reduce the dead weight of the steel box. We can view the stresses at each construction state and make sure these are within the allowable limit. These steel straddle box members needed special approval from TechStart before we started designing as they are classified as fracture critical members so we needed to check the fatigue stresses and the stress requirements were stringent per ashto as these are fracture critical elements. Also as the steel box member is uh, fracture critical, these members needed an access door from one end and the insides painted all white 
with the lightning for better inspection of the structure. Uh, here are a few details of the steel cap at the bearing. The steel cap was supported by an elastomeric bearing pad with embedded anchor bolts, which allowed the cap to be rotated before they were engaged. The steel bearing was fixed on one end and allowed expansion on other. The steel reinforced elastomeric bearing was designed using method B of ASHTO using an in-house spreadsheet. Loads from Midas were extracted as input to the design of the bearing. This was a very critical connection as we had to consider the expansion in the steel cap and not restrict the movement due to temperature. Also, these bearings were checked for the condition when the girders are placed on one span for overturning. This bearing ended up being very economical. On the right-hand side, you can see the sole plate being dropped down on top of the column. So moving on to the post-tension uh, concrete bands, as, as I discussed in past slides, we have used Midas Civil to design post-tension straddle bands. Here is a multi-level interchange uh, being constructed on one of our projects where we had several straddle bands, some of which were designed using Midas. Post-tension uh, straddle bands like steel Straddle bends also needed multiple construction stages due to high loads and excessive straddle lengths of, uh, with multiple stage post-tensioning, each of which were modeled, analyzed, and designed using MIDAS. Uh, these are a few close-up pictures of the post-tension straddle bends uh, shown in the previous slide after first stage of post-tensioning. As you can see on the left side, four out of eight PD ducts are post tension the top four and on the right side the bottom two out of six are post tension this is a another picture from one of our projects we had uh, seven post tension bends back to back carrying the main lanes uh, crossing over the railroad tracks these straddle bends were either two or three column bends with overall cap lengths varying from 100 to 190 feet and a section depth varying from nine and a half to 13 and a half feet. These are the tendon profiles of the seven straddle bends, which uh, I show you in the previous slide. These were all designed using Midas Civil and were back checked with ADAPT with the results of both the softwares being within 5%. So as uh, as shown in uh, previous slides, we have used uh, post-tension bends in uh, various projects. In the next few slides, I'll go over the design process using MIDAS. So the first step is to decide whether post-tensioning post is in need needed in a str straddle bend. Typically, from our past experiences, Mostly post-tensioning in a bent cap is needed if center to center uh, column distance is more than 60 feet. This is just a rule of thumb. The 60 feet comes from the maximum rebar length, which needs to be spliced if straddles are more than 60 feet. And the rebars get a bit crowded in con con conventional reinforcing bent. There are many other factors also, such as the deck placement relative to supports as that would decide the maximum moment in the cap. Also from our experience, if the maximum service moment is more than 20,000 kip foot, then it would be a good idea to post tension the bend cap. As, as you can see, uh, the length of the straddles are usually governed by obstructions underneath, such as roadways and railroad. Typically, it's very common to have straddles in direct connectors and railroad crossings. So once uh, it's decided you need post-tensioning, the next step is to select an appropriate cap cross-section and come up with a tendon layout in the cross-section as an input to the MIDAS software. This can be done by some quick hand calculations with analysis help from MIDAS and by checking stresses at critical sections at various construction stages 
and making sure these stresses are within allowable limit. Although it would be great if in future uh, updates, Midas can design tendons just based on superstructure loading, which would make the design process much faster. Before we uh, use Midas to design post-tension bends, we need to run a quick preliminary analysis model in Midas without post-tensioning to run two construction stages with dead load of the cap and girders and with a final condition of straddle bends with live load to get the maximum service moments for each case to compute the stresses at each post-tensioning stage. As you can see here from screenshot, we usually run two models just uh, to make sure the live load analysis is done accurately. On the left-hand side, we have an RCPR analysis of live load to compute the maximum moments in the straddle, and we compare that with the MIDAS on the right-hand side. We have found leap bridge to be on the conservative side as it doesn't consider the 3D live load distribution, whereas MIDAS does, which is more accurate. So once we have the maximum moments from MIDAS at the critical section for both construction stages, which usually is at the center of the deck in a two straddle bend or on top of interior column in a three column bend, we can easily calculate the stresses by assuming preliminary number of strands. We would need to confirm if tensile and compressive stresses are within allowable limit at each stage. Usually the most critical stage is when the support forms are removed from the bottom of the cap and the girders are loaded on either side. In this stage, the bent cap cannot support itself by any amount of reinforcing and post-tensioning is required. We can assume preliminary number of strands and its strand pattern to compute the stresses in the cap at critical sections. In this stage, we are just checking the stresses under the self-weight of the cap and girders only. It's This is an iterative process to get the preliminary number of strands and its geometry by making sure the tensile and compressive stresses are within the allowable envelope per ashton. The second step would be to calculate the stresses for the final stage when the bridge is open to live load traffic in final conditions. The moments again can be extracted from MIDAS and stresses calculated using those moments. As expected, you would have uh, compression at top and tension at bottom due to self weight and dead and live load. And you will have tension at top and compression at bottom due to the post tensioning. As you can see from these color coded diagrams, the preliminary strand pattern and number of strand, number of ducts, PT ducts should be accordingly adjusted in such a way that the net resultant stress for the applied load and the post tensioning should ideally produce all compression in the section within allowable limits per rashto. This is an iterative process and the only variable is geometry and number of strands. For the stress calculation due to post tensioning, we have assumed an average loss of 30% uh, due to long term and short term. Once this preliminary analysis is completed, then this tendon layout and the bend cap cross, cross section can be exactly modeled in MIDAS to accurately analyze the stresses for all locations along the length of the bend cap. So these are the allowable stress limits at various construction stages per ASHTO based on 7,000 PSI concrete. The governing stress is usually the final uh, tension at bottom of the straddle bend, 300 PSI in this case for 7,000 PSI concrete. This is assuming severe corrosive environment. So as mentioned before, typically we have uh, five construction stages as listed here for post-tension straddle bends. Firstly, Columns and cap is constructed with shorings in place to support the cap until the concrete is hardened and achieved its initial strength. Once this is accomplished, then post-tensioning for first stage is done 
with shoring support still in contact. After the stage of post-tensioning, shoring towers can be removed. Girders are placed in backward span and then in forward span, followed by post-tensioning of the remaining tenons. Final stage is to place the precast panels and pour the cast-in-place slab on top of precast panels and barriers are casted, which completes the construction process. This is shown in the next few slides. So caps, uh, the cap is installed with first stage post-tensioning done. Girders are placed on one side. Torsion needs to be checked in this condition. Typically, doesn't govern as section is large enough to have sufficient torsional capacity. The girders are installed on other side of the cap, remaining PD tendons jacked. Finally, the deck is casted, barriers are placed, which completes all the construction stages. For each of these construction stages, we should investigate the stresses and make sure it's within allowable limits. Typic, uh, so typically the tendon profile is a smooth parabolic curve with smooth transitions where necessary. We should avoid any kinks in the profile as this would attract unwarranted stresses at these locations in the cap. In MIDAS, tendon profile can be easily modeled using MIDAS uh, tendon profile dialog box. I found this to be very convenient. The way to model the tendons is you need to estimate the horizontal and vertical coordinates of the tendons every 10 point along the bend and import them from spreadsheet into MIDAS. This is a bit time consuming, but will accurately import the tendons in correct locations. I believe recently MIDAS has a new feature introduced, which can be found under tools tab named tendon profile generator, which I believe can model the tendons automatically. If you define the pinch point between which you want the parabolic variation, which might come in handy. The losses. Uh, Tendon losses can be easily computed by defining tendon properties in MIDAS and linking them to appropriate time-dependent materials such as creep and shrinkage using the desired code per project. Uh, MIDAS has various codes already uh, accounted for such as ACI, ASHTO, European codes, Indian, Chinese. Once this is completed, MIDAS calculates the short-term or instantaneous losses, which are friction, anchorage slip, elastic shortening, and long-term losses, which are creep, shrinkage, and relaxation, and provides an output for them for each tendon along the length of the tendon. TxDOT has its own loss analysis, which is a bit different and a tweaked version of ASHTO. It might be handy if MIDAS could incorporate this in their program. So concrete hinge. Another uh, critical detail in designing uh, post-tension straddle bends is the connection between post-tension cap and column. We analyze this uh, connection as a hinge, and it is typic typically uh, uh, we have modeled it using the elastic links in MIDAS by releasing the moments in the Y direction, which is perpendicular to the cap, as it's free to rotate in that direction. Here are a few cross sections uh, and elevation views of concrete hinge used in straddle bends. We have used this hinge detail on various projects. This detail is inexpensive when compared to other costly alternative bearings, such as pod bearings, which are typically used on straddle bends. As we are just uh, using three quarter inch bond breaking material between the bottom of the cap and top of column, and a couple of uh, con uh, reinforced concrete cylinders to model the hinge behavior at either ends of the cap. This is very efficient connection, which models the cap as simply supported on either sides of uh, e either ends by the hinge connection. Uh, you can see the post construction pictures after stage one post tensioning by using this detail in one of our projects. So um, out, design output 
and inter interpreting results. So results from Midas can be conveniently exported to Excel spreadsheet and the results can be verified against allowable stresses for each stages. So this is an output from Midas and we were able to uh, interpret and plot the envelope as you, you we have tension end zone reinforcing. So another critical aspect of post tension design of straddle bend is the design and detailing of end zones near either ends. As you can see from the sections shown here, the reinforcing at the ends get crowded. We designed the end zone reinforcing using an in-house in spreadsheet and we made sure we had enough reinforcement to take the high stresses at the ends per ashto. I believe we cannot design, uh, Midas cannot automatically design the end zone uh, reinforcement. I would recommend Midas team to investigate this as it would aid us in designing the end zone and speeding up the design effort. So finally, I want to conclude by saying Midas Civil has a very good user interface you can easily input all details in few minutes using this interface, even modeling the cross frames for a plate girder or tendon layouts in a pre-stress girder, which might be a bit time consuming in other softwares can be quickly modeled using the wizard feature. Using the wizard, you can also define the cap, girder and column cross sections and model the construction stages, loading information which sets a pretty good starting point to begin the model. These things can be easily tweaked later if you wanted to change. In Midas, all the results can be viewed in Excel format and can be easily exported and analyzed in a spreadsheet. Even the input for the nodes and elements can be accomplished by using spreadsheets and imported. This is handy and reduces time to build the model. Construction phasing in Midas is pretty good feature. Uh, we can easily model various construction stages for different conditions and loading. And you can update them easily if, you, uh, if anything changes without affecting the other aspects of the model. Because of this tool, we can easily make changes to the model later during the construction if it is not being built as it was intended in design, which happens all the time and can check and make sure the design is still within the required ASHTO guidelines. Midas Civil has very detailed steel code check output for steel members per AISC manual. This is pretty uh, neat feature which can be used in calculation book for the projects. Midas has flexibility to model plate girders as grill edge model or full 3D, mod, uh, 3D model. The primary di difference between them is the grill edge model doesn't account for the lateral stiffness. And the 3D model considers the lateral stiffness due to the cross frames and analyzes the plate girder. 
also the grillage model doesn't capture the internal forces due to the curvature, but the 3D model considers the forces generated due to the curvature. So in post-tensioning, Midas uh, is just a tool in designing a post-tension bend, unlike simply reinforced concrete beam, complete design of post-tension bends cannot be done using only Midas. As discussed in previous slide, you would need to do some hand calculations to determine the preliminary geometry of the section and come up with a tendon layout, after which Midas can analyze the cap. Also, the end zone design is missing uh, from Midas and needs to be done externally. But if this, th these things are incorporated in Midas, then it would enhance the design process significantly. So this concludes the presentation. And if you have any questions, please go ahead. Thank you, Anas, for the presentation. I will, I will show you the question. So these are. Can you show? Can you see my screen? Yes. Yep. So you can go ahead. So for uh, for the loss, we we uh, we had some uh, spreadsheets. So we cal uh, c compared the losses uh, there, uh, uh, using those spreadsheets and verified in Midas. So we, uh, I think there was a question: Can you provide more details on how these losses loss values are verified? So that's the answer for that. So uh, we we, uh, we 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 didn't analyze that as plate and elements. The the cap was modeled like a two D element. It was not a mesh. No, the for the stress calculations, uh, we modeled it as. as a 2D. Yeah, the meshing was done uh, by Midas itself. And uh, the mesh uh, size was, uh, I believe it was up to two feet uh, when we were using. And then we went to uh, critical elements. Then the mesh size was reduced. And it was all generated by Midas. Uh, in the steel box cap model, the plate elements instead of beam element, it was designed as a uh, plate elements. Uh, and uh, the, the, and then we, we did run as a, uh, as a box to come up with the final stresses. Uh, for the proposed tension losses, when we did uh, initial estimate, we, as Anas has mentioned, we had used 30% uh, losses for our preliminary sizing of the tendons, but once the tendons were, uh, uh, number of tendons were finalized and the profile was finalized, we used MIDAS to calculate actual losses. And uh, we, we did have to go through some iterations uh, so that the losses, so we actually ended up with little less loss. I think we ended up with like 25 to 28% range uh, total losses when we were using MIDAS. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, no, the last question as a part of QA, QC, uh, it was by different engineers. The, the, dip, the two programs were by two different engineers. There was a designer and then a completely different independent engineer who didn't knew anything about the design was independently yeah, the, verified. The requirement of the independent design in Texas is uh, once the original designer finishes the design, they provide only the plans to the independent engineer and the independent engineer sort of reverse engineers it uh, using a different software and then the two results are compared. And the criteria is if the two results are within 5%, then the design is accepted without any further discussions. But if the difference is more than 5%, then the two engineers get together and, and see where the differences are and they hatch out those differences and then uh, they have to rerun or redesign their, their uh, design until they come up to a point that the both designs are within 5%. Yep, then I will move to the next question. If, if you have any more questions, do email us too. If like if our answers are, uh, if you need any, like on the questions, if the answers are not clear. The hinge diameter, we, it all depends on how much load is there. Uh, but on this exam, uh, the, what we were showing, we had used 10 inch diameter for the hinge. Yes, the foundation stiffness was considered in the model. Yes, the temperature gradient was taken into account and the temperature stresses were uh, considered. Yes, the, uh, when we designed the box, uh, steel boxes, torsion rigidity was checked because of the loading conditions and the contract. Before we were thinking to put a condition on the construction that uh, they install the pre-stress beam on each side of the straddle bend alternatively so that we don't create uh, Okay. Torsional moments, but contractor pushed us on that and they didn't want it to move their crane back and forth. So we went and analyzed it even that all the girders are installed on one side first and created this torsional moments and we made sure that it is not critical. I think that question is about the U-shaped girder for the pedestrian. Yeah, for the pedestrian bridge, we did take the uh, torsional, uh, Midas was able to check the torsional rigidity when there is no top uh, concrete slab in place. The difference was not uh, the, between the Inverted T section or rectangular section as for designing the post tension is not much. It's only the detailing to have that uh, corbel on the side to support the pre-stress beams. <clears throat> yeah, Midas takes all the loading conditions, combinations as per ASHTO and we can modify if we want, if you want to add any construction loading conditions. For the, uh, on the torsional distortion of the steel box, uh, we, we did 
uh, use 2D to come up with the basic designs, uh, design and uh, plate sizes. Once we have finalized it, we ran the 3D a model to estimate the distortion and deflection and all those things. You can go to the next question. Do you remember how much uh, temperature gradient we had used? I don't remember exactly how much uh, the temperature difference we have taken to calculate the temperature gradient. We can. Uh, find that out and uh, give that answer. Uh, text oh. on typical design build, build projects, uh, Techstar does not have any independent design requirements, but those requirements are only on the design build projects. And their guideline is, uh, as I said earlier, uh, if the difference is more than 5%, they want the, both the designers to hatch out those differences and agree on, on the design approach to bring both the designs within 5%. Girders were, uh, were simply supported uh, on, the on elastomeric pads on the bend cap. So there was no structural connection. Uh, Expansion is joints were used on the straddle caps at each location. We didn't have the continuous deck we had expansion joints on either sides of the straddle cap. Yep, there is a one last question. What does the independent design check affect construction scale? Uh, Independent design time was taken into account in our initial schedule, design schedule. And uh, typically, we didn't have any issues. Most of the time, our design met the 5% criteria. There was only a few instances where we had to go back and forth uh, between the engineer of record and independent engineer. But overall, I don't remember it affected any construction schedule. 